you know, there are two sets of limitations, there's technical limitations and economic limitations. So the technical limitations we already sort of kind of talked about, which is smart contracts can't do any, can't do absolutely everything that, that, that you can, can conjure up in your head. And you need to be cognizant of that because then you're just proposing stuff that is, you know, like unicorns um, or, or whatever. Um, but even if it can, there are economic limitations in the sense that it may not be cost effective to do it, despite the fact that you can. Okay, so technical limitations, a little bit, this is a bit sort of summarizing what I was saying earlier, but let me point out, um, so smart contracts can only react to information that the Ethereum blockchain can detect. At least smart contracts on Ethereum can only react to stuff that Ethereum can detect. So what that means, for example, is that you can't literally invoke physical collateral or physical assets rather, right? So you can't literally say, I have a building over there and, and that's, the, that's the collateral. Um, because Ethereum doesn't know that you have a building over there, okay? Um, you also can't use fiat currencies because the US government, for example, has a monopoly on the US dollar. Um, and, and so, you know, that, that's, that's basically counterfeiting if you're starting to make up US dollars um, or claiming to. Um, and so it can't condition on arbitrary events because certain events are not things that are within the, so let's call it the information set of the Ethereum blockchain. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't fixes, like let's call it partial fixes to the sorts of problems I've just been describing. For example, when it comes to physical assets, if you um, are able to tokenize a physical asset and have the token live on the blockchain, this partially resolves the problem. So for example, um, the US dollar not being able to be accessed from the blockchain, what Tether does basically is they claim that they have a bunch of US dollars off the blockchain and they have tokens on the blockchain that they claim are backed by their holdings off the blockchain. So their token is not literally a US dollar, but they claim it's backed off the blockchain. And so um, their token, they have control over and, and the blockchain can detect it, right? And so they, so they sort of, that, 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 that's why it's called a stable coin, which is it's supposed to maintain value because there's value off the blockchain block, uh, backing it. Um, and so it sort of functions the way a US dollar does function, but it's not counterfeit because they're not claiming it's literally a US dollar. Um, and, and, the, and the blockchain can detect it because it's a token that actually is deployed on mm -hmm. the Ethereum blockchain. Um, so, so, so this point applies both equally to like physical assets and let's say regular fiat currencies, where if you can tokenize, you can sort of get around it. Now, the issue of course with the tokenization is there's a level of trust coming from the entity that is claiming that it's backed off chain, right? So I don't, you know, I, I, I always wonder how, why people actually do trust Tether. But for example, if JP Morgan were to do it, maybe a lot more people would trust it. Um, and it would allow other corporations that you might not trust to be able to write contracts on something like uh, a stable coin, US dollar Tether sort of thing um, by invoking JP Morgan's coin, right? Or even the US government could say, look, we'll tokenize something that represents a US dollar. And then other companies you don't trust could start to use it in their contracts um, to resolve trust issues with them, right? So, so it's not like the point that you can't have physical collateral or regular fiat currencies completely destroys the ability to reduce, uh, to, to ameliorate trust issues. It just requires a, a workaround and the workaround though, however, is imperfect. Um, sometimes people think of Ethereum as a supercomputer. It's not. It's actually the exact opposite of a supercomputer in the sense that it's less efficient than your laptop. And the reason that it's less efficient than your laptop is because these miners are running the same code. There's redundant computation and there is expense tied to the fact that, that it's redundantly, that there's redundant computation because these miners are checking on each other that they're doing the right thing. And the only way I can check on whether you ran the code correctly is if I run the code but then it's expensive for both of us and somebody has to pay for it, okay? So do not think Amazon Web Services when you think Ethereum, okay? That, that inefficiency I'm describing is providing some advantage, which is it's, it's if you don't trust people that it's useful to, to, to be checking on them, but this is not Amazon Web Services. 